sun, moon, rising, and Venus signs. Welcome to my channel, Tarot by the Intuitive Teacup. We're going to read your tarot cards here. Uh, this will be specifically catered more towards my Leo rising as I introduce some sort of uh, astrology knowledge. Uh, but of course, anyone and everyone is welcome in this reading. If you strongly re resonate with Leo, welcome. Happy to have you. Uh, even the cross watchers. Who am I to turn the cross watchers away, right? All right, let's go around the zodiac here. Guys, these are general messages on YouTube, so not everything I say every single week will resonate with every single one of you. I hope lots of it does. I hope you can use these uh, messages and information to motivate, empower, inspire you. That's what I aim to do here on my channel. If you're not feeling that way, ooh, Ten of Cups. We'll talk about that. If you're not feeling that way after your reading, uh, perhaps it is not your reading. Maybe you're being asked to let go, release those messages, assume they're going out to someone else who needs to hear it. Um, you're accountable and responsible for all your own actions and decisions, all right? Um, ooh, Knight of Wands, like it. You actually have some, some fun, playful cards here, so I always like to see kind of that lighthearted energy. I'm just going to move my board over ever so slightly. Um, and then we're going to jump into your reading here. So... Uh, I don't know why, the first thing that called out to me here was an Ace of Pentacles, uh, a, a new offer um, for my Leo Risings, uh, for most of you. Again, granted, we're, we're doing whole sign astrology here. Uh, your 12th house is ruled by the sign of Cancer, and currently in that area of the sky, the Cancerian sort of uh, stars or zodiac sign, right? Mars, the planet of action and energy, is, uh, is powering through. It's trying to chug along. It's possible that some work that you're doing sort of behind the scenes currently is going to lead to a big offer. This could also be a hidden offer, and I don't think there's any um, negative uh, uh, association to what I just said there, a hidden offer. I think it just simply hasn't been revealed yet. Um, but yeah, keep on keeping on with Mars there. It's, it, Mars wants to get ahead. Want, Mars wants to be very assertive. What's interesting though is it's showing up in a house which is fairly secluded. It's, it's a house, a, a, I should say an area of your life when I say a house. An area of your life that is, it's sort of a being removed from society. It's very closely connected to your spirituality and, you know, mind, body, spirit, but your close connection to God, to source, to universal love and oneness. Um, a really great placement if you're someone who's very spiritual or intuitive or creative. Something in that area of life is going to come out in a nice little offer to you. It could be a fresh idea or a building block that you're, you're working towards or helping you uh, pave the way towards something bigger. I don't know why. I just like that. But my eyes were immediately drawn to that. So let's, let's look and see what's sort of trining it. Um, so I'm, I'm looking at uh, your 12th, your 4th, and your 8th house. Those uh, houses are connected by their element. You have water in those houses. Uh, and, and that's very lovely for my Leo Risings, especially because those, those houses tend to um, reward uh, the areas of life if you approach them with a more intuitive, creative, loving, relationship-esque oriented uh, mentality. So you have the Sun card coming up. There you are showing up uh, in, in the fourth house. So possibly something uh, is being highlighted in your, quite literally, your house or home where you re uh, reside, where you live. This could also have to do with family members, something with a mother, uh, childhood, mother and child, something about that. Uh, there could be some offer coming through there. Maybe there's pregnancy. Maybe there's a bun in the oven for some of you. Um, yeah, and so in your house of... Um, Merged finances or sex. The eighth house has a lot of connotations to it. It also has sort of a uh, psychological connection. Um, Six of Pentacles, generally speaking, is a very good card. I believe it's moon in Taurus. So your, your natural intuitive desire to nourish other people. It could be that you guys are adding one to the mix or uh, expanding your household in a way that allows for, I don't know, more children, or maybe you're moving your parents in with you. Maybe you're helping your parents to move. So something about, there's a lot of focus and highlight here, but generally it's very positive energy. So if you're going through a situation where you're having to move because you lost your job or this or that, I don't think this is your reading. There's something very positive. Ace of Pentacles, the sun and reciprocity. A hidden offer comes through, but with the sun, eventually it's illuminated and it seems like a really good offer. Um, it may involve water signs in your life, a Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Um, <clears throat> you may be investing more money in your education or a training program or a course, especially if it has to do with uh, a language or... Um, honestly, psychology or um, things associated with Jupiter. So religion, uh, philosophies, um, 
bigger concepts, for lack of a better term. Jupiter is going to be transiting your eighth house of merged finances. So there could be joint partnership in any of those areas. <clears throat> Jupiter is generally a planet of good luck, though. Again, good fortune. So whatever this is, there's an expansion in something because you're putting effort into it now. You may see the fruits of your labor when, when Jupiter transits that house, which is coming up this week. I'm so excited. Jupiter is moving into Pisces. It's been in Aquarius for quite a long time. It's been in signs that have been very difficult. So to put a fun, buoyant planet like Jupiter in Capricorn and then Aquarius. It, it's not no shade to those signs, but Jupiter doesn't love to be in those signs just by nature. So the fact that Jupiter is going to be in Pisces, it loves to be in Pisces. So every sign of the Zodiac is going to feel that lighthearted energy in a more profound way or impactful way than we have for the last couple of years, which is great. So specifically for my Leo Risings, that has more to do, again, with houses that are more private or spiritual. Um, expansion expansion in mergers and sort of contracts. I know that's a very kind of heady way of describing it, but the eighth house is a very difficult concept. It, 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 has, it has a lot to do with the self versus the other and the merging of the two. Very much connected to money and finance, but also self-worth and what who and what you value. That's sort of eighth house properties. Again, I, I would say something positive is going to come about, but I'm having trouble sort of pinpointing it myself. It has something to do with this, something being nurtured behind the scenes. It's, it's coming into the light soon. Um, let's talk about your ninth house, because that's where your ten of cups is coming through. So uh, ten, ten of cups is sometimes generational family aspects, or it's just like the Cinderella story, something that makes you feel really happy, a lot of joy, a lot of abundance. Um, bringing what was once an internal thought into fruition and seeing the what you've manifested in the physical and the 3D right before you. That's sort of what I'm getting there. <clears throat> this also has to do with the offer too. Um, your ninth house is ruled by planet Mars. Again, Mars is going through cancer in your house of uh, private spiritual endeavors. Something about those two things are connected. This could be something that starts off small and, and winds up being quite um, impactful and significant. We love this card. Everybody loves the Ten of Cups, right? Well, I shouldn't say everybody because there's always going to be that one person that's like, I don't like the Ten of Cups. <laughs> okay, cool. We don't all like the Ten of Cups, but most of us do. This is happiness. This is inclusivity. These are so connected and I, I'm having trouble bridging the gap verbally to you. I don't know why it is. And I think honestly, it's probably because it's coming up in your house of like Pisces and Neptune. It's kind of dreamy and ethereal. It's kind of hard to pinpoint. That's exactly how I'm feeling in your tarot reading. I don't know what it is, but it feels beautiful and it feels good. A lot of joy and happiness could come from a period of travel uh, in, the, in the coming weeks or months. Um, especially long distance travel to reunite with family or, uh, it's funny, I heard long lost lovers. Interesting. I, what I was going to say was your soul family, your tribe, your group of people, whether they're friends or family. Um, this is connected to Jupiter too. It's happiness. It's abundance. I'm going to move on only because I'm struggling with it a little bit. I don't know exactly what that is yet, so maybe that will be made more apparent later on. Maybe you guys know exactly what it is, but let's hop over into your 10th house. There's a lot of action happening in your 10th and 11th house. So your public life, your long-term career goals, um, and then moving into that, the wishes and dreams and accomplishments, your house of gains, uh, wins, victories, successes, um, coming into fruition. The Hermit is showing up in your 10th house. So something where you've, uh, it's been more private. Again, the very interesting. This is your public house of reputation, your recognition, your public standing. You have the Hermit. The Hermit is literally the one who, who is withdrawn, the one who's off in his own little, his own little bubble, his isolation. Uh, quarantine, right? So a lot of you, it could just be reintroducing yourself to the world after coming out of a period of isolation, but I think it's it's more than that. Um, and going into that, what the hermit is shining his lantern on is freedom, uh, liberation. Again, Mars energy. Rebuilding something. 
So Venus and Mercury are transiting your 11th house, uh, which also has to do with uh, friendships, hopes, dreams, witches. Uh, did I say witches? That's hilarious. Hopes, dreams, and wishes. Um, uh, Mercury is the planet of your thoughts, your intelligence, your communication, uh, your mental aptitude, your social life, right? Uh, technology. So you have that planet as well as the uh, planet Venus of love, balance, harmony, money, luxury, things of that sort. Coming into your house of friendships or again, long-term wishes and dreams. So it, some of you may end up finding success uh, online, uh, more money coming to you via your online business or social outlets, social networks. I would be careful about uh, how much you're putting out there. And it, I, I oh gosh, Leo, I'm really struggling with this. It having a negative impact on your public image or reputation. I'm almost getting kind of savage, um, like bullying, online bullying. If you're promoting something, it's like you're going to have haters in the comments. So with Mars and Cancer, make sure you're not acting abruptly or it's it's triggering that really emotional reactive side of you. Um, because I, I, you know, I would say this to anyone. If you believe in what you're doing and it's not hurting anyone, just because this person disagrees with you doesn't make them right. And, you know, you could say vice versa too, but if this is your path and this is your calling and this is your destiny and with the hermit it is, it's divine wisdom. I would be careful that the chaos around you isn't influencing you too much. That's a really important message there. So there's going to be a new moon in your house of career and finances um, this, this coming week. So new moons are lovely. New moons are a, a wonderful time to get your ducks in a row, to plan, to organize, and think about the long term. Uh, it's not that these hopes and dr dreams and wishes are going to come into fruition instantly, but it's like setting your intentions to set you up for success later. Where? About what? About your long-term career goals. Um, so essentially, if you start putting in the work, <laughs> Virgo showing up, the worker bee of the Zodiac, Virgo and Capricorn, right? Um, this is potentially, you know, implementing those plans or that process and moving forward with them in an organic way. Again, not rushing it, but uh, investing more time in what you feel emotionally fulfilled doing or what it is you want to bring about in your life. Set the seeds now, set the stage, set the manifestations, uh, plant the seeds, if you will, because something about that is going to come around um, in a positive way. I, I apologize. This, um, well, I do and I don't. I, I, I think sometimes this happens. Your tarot messages are so interconnected. I'm always looking for the conversations the cards are having and the planets are having, but there's so many layers to this. I Before I rush in, I just, I kind of want to get like a, yeah, just give me a moment is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> You have a lot of back and forth energy. There's conflict and then there's wins and then there's assessment and then there's happiness and then there's contemplation and then there's like more action or uh, strategizing. It, 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 I may have said this to you last week. I know somebody else had a reading last week. That it, it was very flip floppy. Why is, why is the tower showing up in your 11th house of community and good fortune and friendships? Is there a breaking down of something so that you can do it better? Is there the secret rebuilding of something, a restructuring of a company to allow more independence for you to be more entrepreneurial, for you to be the head of the company? Some of you may have a fantastic travel opportunity coming in and it might be related to your job, but it might not. I have to look at what's squaring this. I like the gosh, this is such a bizarre reading and the, you know, it's fine. I don't mind trying to work through it, but I know it's a, it's a little clunky, I'm sure as the audience here. So you're being asked to move towards love. Uh, whatever or whoever it is you love. It doesn't have to be a person, it could be a thing, it could be a place. Yeah, in fact, the place for sure. Where is it that you love to be? Where, what is an environment that is very thriving or it makes you feel like you, you're thriving when you're in that environment? There may be challenges in, in acquiring that land or that property or going to that place, that destination, even if it's temporary. There may be challenges involved, but I think when you get there, it will be well worth it. So it might not be easy peasy. It might not be um, all smooth sailing, but I think it means enough to you to, to go after it and do it. Um, and I think you will, but I guess I'm just being called to say, make sure Mars doesn't rear his ugly head of being too impatient or too impulsive. With Mars and Cancer, there's a need for both. You need to be very 
uh, action oriented and have good leadership skills, which Cancer can do, as can Aries, very connected to Mars. But with that, again, the traditional trajectory of just running in, Mars in a water energy, it doesn't, it can't really run in. It kind of has to like bounce around and always be moving forward. But again, it's like it's on an ocean wave. It's like surfing. It's a little bit hard to navigate. But once you get sort of the rhythm of it, whatever it is you're doing, once you find the rhythm of it, I think success will come from it. And, and I think it will be well worth it in the end. But I guess it's saying prepare for this to be a fun adventure, but it may ricochet off in a direction that you aren't necessarily anticipating or expecting, especially if there's a fallout within a large community or a social group, especially online. Um, yeah, watch what you're saying behind the safety of your computer screen, because I don't know how this would apply. I don't do fear-based readings, but something about your reputation, if, if somebody can sort of screenshot what you wrote and post it on their social media, that could gain a lot of traction and it could be misconstrued or misinterpreted. Mercury is going to go into retrograde at the end of the month. So this could even be a forewarning. Just be really diligent with what you're publishing uh, for, for the masses or, or in wider groups or audiences, because there's something about that. It could cause a lot of confusion or chaos. So forewarned is forearmed. I guess let's talk about your love life. Um, there's a lot going on here and a lot of it is good, but a lot of it, it's, it's confused or it's foggy right now. There's indecision. There's a need to research more or to, to find out the, the truth, the facts. There's a lot of digging for facts and research. You might be doing research as a part of your job too, Leo. Um, yeah, yeah. There's, I'm hearing like sexual health. So maybe that's literally checking, you know, your yearly physical to make sure everything is good down there. But also there could be, um, there could just be more of a focus on choosing your partners more wisely. Um, yet to be honest, in your house of uh, dating, uh, your fifth house, ruled by Sagittarius, it's possible there's a female water sign showing up, a Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. For a lot of you, especially if you are female, you seem to be closing your cup off to someone else and moving away from it. You seem to be having a more profound, impactful presence in larger social groups right now. So if you're single and looking, again, networking through friends, meeting friends of friends, I would say online, but again, I'm going to stick to what I said, but with caution. I, I don't know. There's just something about... Your words online are being highlighted. The hermit is shining his lantern on your presence online and just to be aware of it, to be cognizant of it. Um, your dating life right now, you seem to be closing off your cup to someone either because you're not interested or they've just, they've played too many games with you. Um, where it's at for a lot of you is happiness within your family group. And I do mean your literal family. Uh, sometimes you, I could say your soul family, but mom, dad, brother, sister, something about that. There's just more of a focus on that right now than your dating life. And these are weekly energies, Leo, right? So it's not always going to be a party. You, This, this is an interesting reading this week. I, I wish I was full of more gems and insight, but I'm curious to know what all this is. Um, and we're going to find out. I promise you, we're going to find out uh, during eclipse season. There's going to be a lunar eclipse in Sagittarius uh, at the end of the month. And then in early June, there is going to be a lunar eclipse in Gemini. And that's where a lot of this energy is concentrated. So eclipse season uh, is known for being a little bit uncomfortable. Um, but as, as any, you know, uncomfortable shift, it really is to promote growth and change in your life. So something in your social networks, your presence in larger group situations, maybe it's not negative, but maybe it's like you sort of have to swim through the rocky waves to get to the beautiful island at the end. There, there could be some upheaval, but it's making way for something much bigger and profound. And I would even say with this, impactful, a lot of energy, like it's shocking, but maybe it's in a way that people are like, I'm going to subscribe to their YouTube channel. I'm going to join their company. I'm like, there could be a lot of uh, focus and attention in you, in your position among again, groups and community members. But with that, you may need to withdraw a bit from romantic prospects in order to put a lot of action and energy into that area of your life. Um, again, that's for some of you. Um, but yeah, eclipse season, a lot more is going to come into play here. I'm curious to see sort of how this pans out in the coming weeks, because first and foremost, there's going to be a, a need or a desire to move away from fifth house activities. Um, 
And again, that doesn't mean forever, but if that's been a huge focus of your life for a year, it's almost like you may have overextended that muscle and now you need to let it heal and move on to another area. So uh, it is the house of self and your self-expression. It's very much connected to Leo, right? It's connected to things with the children. It's connected to playfulness, creativity, hobbies, leisure, dating and sex in terms of just like kind of casual connections. Um, I don't know. I, I see you in the in the next week or so sort of closing your cup off to that. And again, it doesn't mean forever, but maybe this means you're closing off your cup uh, because you're more interested in monogamy now, right? If you've been dating around and you found this really great connection, maybe you're more curious about forging something stronger, more solidified, more exclusive with the person who you've been seeing a long time. Maybe you guys lock it down after you get together, after a period of... Um, uh independence yes but being separated if you guys come back together and then the vibe is still there maybe you're going to lock it down and make it an exclusive thing but yeah i i do see you closing yourself off to, to dating this week and and maybe it has to do with money maybe you have a really good money opportunity coming in and you know you have to show up and, and do the work you seem to be sort of conflicted uh, about how to present yourself this week or There's another person spying on you and wanting to get information on you, but I think you either you don't see them or you're just too busy. You're you're disinterested. That's coming up in your long-term partnerships too. So yeah, this isn't the most warm and fuzzy thing romantically, but I would say career-wise, putting maybe putting some effort in there is definitely gonna pay off for you. That that's where I see the most rewarding cards. And it's not to say any of these are bad, they're just simply energies. How they manifest for each of you will be a little bit different. Yeah, I, I like your house houses of spirituality and soul. The, the stuff tied to sort of more water sign energy, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces. Not per, not per se that it needs to be a collaboration or anything with those signs. It's just houses associated with that more soulful, psychic, creative, spiritual energy is where I see a lot of complementary cards. The sun, reciprocity, generosity, and then the ace of pentacles, something new comes about. But we also have to remember these houses are frequently tied to the past, um, as well as the future, but also something that is sort of hidden right now. It's more of a feeling than it is a fact. It's something probably manifesting inside of you, but again, you haven't presented it out to the world. I like that message, but I understand that it's a little bit uh, cloudy. It's a little bit confusing, and you're absolutely right. So if you know what this is, let me know in the comments below. Um, yeah, bottom of your deck, uh, the, the page of, I'm sorry, the Knight of Wands. Um, a desire to go and explore to uh, I'm here, uncharted territory, to be a little bit adventurous, to harness that creativity in a way where it doesn't um, easily slip through your hands, to do something of value and, and great importance with it. Uh, it's a great card of passion, of travel, of excitement, of uh, sexuality, exploration. That's sort of, the, I would say, one of the themes of this, just simply because it's coming up as bottom of the deck. Um, yeah, my favorite card right now is in your house of mental exploration and travel opportunities. So make the most of that if, if you would like to, Leo. All right, that's what I got for you guys this week. This was a weird one. <laughs> Hopefully next week we'll, we'll have something a little bit more straightforward. But thank you for showing up. If you made it this far, uh, I appreciate you. Please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will also announce the winners of the tarot giveaway right now. What's up guys, super excited to announce the winners of the free tarot giveaway. Congratulations to Michelle, Kristen, Jennifer, and Joe. Uh, thank you guys for entering the contest. I'm already in talks with them about their tarot reading. Um, thanks for being a part of Team Teacup. And thank you additionally to everyone who uh, submitted their entry, everybody who left those really fun, beautiful comments. I loved reading through them. Um, and doing this competition tarot giveaway was so much fun for me. I definitely plan to do more in the future. So if you didn't win this one, definitely show up to the next one and submit your entry. Details on that to be determined uh, sometime in the future. But thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of my soul tribe. And I look forward to interacting with you guys more here on my channel on YouTube.